patch package is a tool that I've been finding myself using more and more lately because of just how helpful it is when I run into a problem. And I want to make a video about it to show you how you can kind of introduce this into your workflow if you have this similar problem that I do. So usually when I use it is when I run into a bug or a change that I want to make in an NPM package that I'm using. So for example here, I have a little React app here where I'm rendering a text box or a text area, and I have some text here, right? But the problem is, is when I copy this text and try to paste it, it doesn't paste correctly. As you can see, it is in two lines up here, but when I paste it, it kind of smashes them into a single line. And I built this text area using a library called Slate, and it's using React, so I'm using the Slate React package. And so I went to GitHub to see what was up with that and see if this was an issue. And sure enough, I found a pull request actually fixing this particular issue that I'm running into. Now, usually what I would do is wait for this get, or this pull request to actually get merged in, and I have to wait for it to be published to NPM, and that can take a while. And sometimes I need these changes like ASAP. And particularly if the changes are pretty small, like if I go into file changes here, I can see there's just three lines that I need to change here. A lot of times I just want to go in and fix that now for myself. So one way I can do this is to fork the package, make the changes, and then publish my own NPM package or pull in from that GitHub repo uh, the package. The problem with that is it's kind of cumbersome to do that, and especially if there's a build system that they have. Like for example here, the file is in TypeScript, so you're going to have to build it out to JavaScript. It's kind of cumbersome to deal with that entire process. A lot faster of a way is to just go into your node modules and change the code there. And so the problem with doing that usually is, well, if you delete node modules, it's gone. It's also not checked into Git that way, so you can't track the changes and that sort of thing. But patch package changes those things and makes that a viable option. So now what I want to show you is just an example of how you can do that yourself. So here I have a package, or really I have the code for what I was just showing you. And so what I'm going to start off by doing is just installing patch package. And then I'm also using yarn, so I'm going to be installing post install, post install. So you need to add this if you're going to be using yarn. And I usually add this as a dev dependency. And now you want to make sure you install any dependencies that you're going to install before you start messing around with node modules. Because with yarn, it sometimes will remove your changes. So that's a good thing to note. Make sure you do it this way. Also, one thing I'll note, if you're using Yarn workspaces, I'll usually add patch package at the root level. So the next thing to do after this is to actually make the change to our package. So what I'm going to do here is say code and then the path to the package that I want to open. In this case, I'm just going to go into node modules and then slate dash react. And then the code command here, all this does is this opens this folder in VS Code. You can also just go up here and do file open if you want to as well. All right, so this is the package Slate React, which has the bug in it that I want to fix some code in. So usually what I like to do when I start here is open up the package.json and see what the main module is. In this case, it is dist slash index.js. Because if we go inside of dist, there can be a lot of index files and a lot of JS files and it can sometimes be hard to find where you actually should start. Now, depending on the package you're using, this can be more or less complex. In my particular case, this is more complex because they're using TypeScript and they're also doing a couple different builds from this. So you can see there's not only a main, but there's a module and there's a UMD and there's a UMD min. And so you can see that there is a couple different starting points, or at least it looks like there's four or five starting points. So what I like to do in this case to kind of figure out which one my particular application is using is just to add some console logs in there. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the top of like say index.js and I will just say console.log and then I'll say index.js and I'll give this a save. And oh, that's another thing I should mention. You notice it kind of reformatted there when I save, that's because I'm using prettier. Usually you don't want that to happen. So I'm actually just gonna control Z and I'm gonna say command P or command shift P and I'm gonna go to file save without formatting. So this will just save the file and then it won't run prettier on it. So it looks, it doesn't mess up the entire thing. And you'll see why that's important uh, later on. But anyway, I'll copy this console log and say add it to index.es.js as well. And I'll just say .es here. And again, I'm going to say save without formatting. And I can also add it to slate react as well. All right, so this is slate dash react. And so this is just give me an idea which one of these files is actually being run. So now if I go back to my application, I can see this. The other thing to note is you may need to restart your server depending on what you're using to actually watch node modules and what Webpack is actually doing. 
So I'm coming back over here and just to be safe, I'm going to just control C out of this and restart my create react app server. All right, so I'm now back on the website. I'm just gonna open up the inspect and go to console. And here I can see the console logs. In this case, I can see index.es.js. So that is the file that I need to make a change in. That is the one that's actually being imported and used in my particular project. So now if I come back over here, I can remove these console logs and again, save without formatting. And we just don't need them anymore. And we'll remove this one too. And now the next thing I need to do is figure out where in this file I actually need to make this change. Now, a lot of times it's gonna be compiled all into a single file. In this case, that is what it is for me. So everything is in index.es.js. So this is just a giant file right here with 1800 lines. So if I go back to my GitHub pull request here, I can actually see the files that are being changed. In this case, I can see editable.tsx was changed. But in this case, this doesn't help me because this is a TypeScript file. So what I'll do is I'll just take one of the lines that is in the file and try to search it. So in this case, I'm just gonna search for div.enter.html. If I come over here, do a search, uh, I actually find the line right here easily. In this case, this is the only place in the file that this is being used, so it's easy to find the location. And if I take a quick look and I look at these lines of code, I can come over here and compare, this looks about the right area. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy these two lines that I need to add, and I can see I add this above this text-html line. So that's right here. And I'm just gonna come and I'm gonna paste it right here. And then if I want to, I can add semicolons just to match, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm also gonna add this line right here. And then I'm just gonna ignore this comment down here. I don't care about that. We'll add this down below. And again, I'm going to save without formatting, and then I'm gonna restart my server and come back to the website. All right, so I'm back at the website, and now I'm gonna see if that actually fixed it. So I'm going to copy the two lines, and I'm gonna paste it, and awesome, it's now pasting in two lines just how I wanted. So we applied the fix, and now we have some extra lines of code that are in our node modules. The next step is to actually save that and make it permanent. And that is where patch package comes in, and we're actually gonna run a command here. So I'm gonna say npx patch package, and then I'm just gonna say the name of the package that I wanna patch. In this case, it's going to be slate-react. And then I run this, and oh, it looks like it kinda of had an error or a seg fault here. Uh, all right, that's odd. I'm not really sure why I ran into this. I cannot try running this with yarn and see if that fixes it. And that kind of looks like it's doing better, yep. So as you can see here, it's gonna diff the files and see what changes you made. And so that's why you usually don't want to have prettier run. In that case, it's gonna do like a ton of changes. So if you want a really clean diff file, then uh, don't do that. All right, so if I come over here to my file structure, of my application, you can see a new folder was created called patches. And if I click on this, I can actually see the lines of code that I add. In this case, I can see I appended these two lines, right? Or these three lines. And you can also see that this is, says slate-react, so that's the right package, and I can also see the version. And the other cool thing about this is if I end up upgrading the version of slate-react later and this patch becomes irrelevant, what a uh, patch package will do is it'll just give me a little warning and let me know I've upgraded to a new version and ask me if I still wanna keep this patch or not. In that case, usually I'll actually end up deleting this later because this is more of a temp fix. Now, the only last thing to do with this is to apply this patch whenever we do an install. And so for that, we're just going to go to our package.json, come over here and add a post install. And we're just gonna say after the post install, we want to run patch package. And so now what will happen is, let's say I delete my node modules, right? So all the changes I just made are gone, but because we are using patch package, it saved the patch here. And as you can see, it takes just a second there to actually run. Uh, but if I run yarn now, what's gonna happen is it's gonna install the packages. And then after it's done installing stuff, it's gonna actually run patch package, thanks to this post install. And it's just going to apply this patch. And so it's gonna go into this file that it has here and make that change. And we can see that here in a second. Cool, it finished installing and you can see here it says that it ran patch package and it said it applied the patches. In this case, it applied a single patch, Slate React at this version. And to, just to show you when we install a different version of uh, Slate React, for example, that'll throw an error. So let's do Slate React at, uh, I don't know, at version five. I don't think this version exists, but here we go. Let me pick another version. So in this case, I'm just gonna go back one version and install this. 
and uh, hopefully patch package should it give me a little warning that I've changed the version. Yep, there you go. This is the error that you'll get if you try to change the version of a package that you have a patch for. So in this case, you can see I have a patch for 0.57.1 and the install version is 0.57.0. So in this case, I can either decide whether to just delete this patch or if I want to go in and change the patch for this new version that I've installed. It's up to you to make that choice depending on whether the fix is changed or whatnot. And you can kind of take it from here. But yeah, there you go. That is an introduction into Patch Package. Again, I've been really enjoying this whenever stuff comes up that I need to make a change to one of the libraries that I'm using, and I don't want to wait until it's changed. This actually gives me a nice fix for something that I need to do ASAP. So definitely give it a try if you run into that particular problem.